All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another The Fuel Show. And uh, yes, once again, because we always seem to do this, we have yet another new guest co-host for you. Uh, this gentleman, I, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. Love the fact that this, this guy airs from Utah. We were just chatting before the show. We're gonna, we'll probably geek out during the show, but the guy knows a little bit about uh, some beautiful powder from Snowbird Mountain, one of the first mountains I ever skied out west. So if you're a newer listener, yes, I am a ski buff. And yes, I love Colorado. I love Utah. And I love the West after living there. But hey, let me help you guys understand a little more about our guest co-host today. So this gentleman is one of the world's most educated and experienced doctors. And we're going to dig more into that later in the show too, because he's got a nice balance of different focuses. Uh, but let's get a little more into him. He's got, he's board certified in anti-aging medicine with a doctorate in, and here's a little hint, naturopathic medicine, PhD degrees in immunology, medical biology from the toxicology program at Utah State University and a master's degree in cardiac rehabilitation and wellness. So if that doesn't give you guys a ton of <laughs> credentials, um, you might have an idea who we're going to be talking to today. <laughs> but let's just go ahead and dive in. Without further ado, our guest co-host is Dr. Gordon Pedersen. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I, I got to just drive right in. Like, what, did you just get bored and you just wanted to start picking up a few extra pieces of paper? Uh, wh why go multi-doctorate? I know why, but I think the listeners need to hear right off the bat because that's a lot of commitment, my friend. Well, my brother got Crohn's disease. My mother had uh, cancer of the thyroid at 33. My sister got cancer of the thyroid at 33. Many of my family members all had this cancer at 33 years of age. Combine that with the disease that the doctors just couldn't figure out, Crohn's disease. I said, I'm going to go into something that's going to help me discover and solve this family problem. But... I found out through traditional medicine that wasn't the solution. So I had to find more solutions. I went into naturopathic. I went to immunology. And I've discovered that no single medical discipline has all the answers. And I just kept looking so that I could help my family. Well, first of all, love the commitment. And I love the fact that you went with this theme of family first. I think you can't beat a better driving force uh, to clearly... Uh, get somebody like yourself to accomplish all that extended education because, uh, I mean, who else was going to do it, all right? I mean, you guys were going back and forth. To, to, I love the fact you threw in the keyword here, traditional medicine. Um, yeah, let's have a quick debate on that. What is, why do we call this traditional medicine when if you actually extend your research back far enough, Eastern medicine versus Western medicine wouldn't you consider just based on history and years ago that wouldn't Eastern medicine be considered traditional because it was there first and it was being practiced for many, many years? You're exactly right. But we've had Western medicine now for over 80 years and it's become traditional according to the media. And I think we've just labeled it. And I think it's an inadequate adjective that we've put on it. I think that the traditional medicines were actually foods. Traditional medicines are probably herbal medicine. You know, I spent a lot of time with a shaman, and this shaman, absolutely, just an, a Native American, mm -hmm. I brought him to a medical conference with me. And you know what? Everybody was so interested in him because he taught that every fruit and vegetable, a pepper, a gourd, whatever it was, Based on its shape, God had shaped it for whatever organ it was going to work on in your body. So you've got this pepper shaped like a heart. So it was for the heart. Mm. Everybody was fascinated with this guy. And he started out once in a little breakout session by saying, all cancer comes from holding a grudge. And I thought, my gosh, some of what this guy says resonates to me, wow. as well as traditional medicine, as well as medical prescriptions. Oh, my gosh, I just said, I got to put all this together and see what's the most common sense medicine. So, uh, and, I mean, obviously, you're, you're a, you're a multi-author, right? Let's go ahead and toss that in there, besides all the crazy doctorates. Um, it, it was gentlemen like, you know, influencers like him, uh, like a shaman or or... So well, actually, real quick, is it shaman or shaman? 
Because you're you going know, with shaman. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know in the West I call him a shaman, and I know in the East I call him shaman. Okay. And I don't know if I'm correct, but I just go with the flow. I just, that just popped in my head just now. I'm like, you know, I've never, I've never been able to ask that question. So <laughs> you, you caught me with the I don't know question. I really don't. Well, and actually, let's pause on that. So uh, another good, another great uh, couple of doctors I know, they're more on the chiropractic side, the wellness side. But one of the best things I brought up on past shows, I love one of their quotes was, you know, we have to take on the responsibility to become our own inner physicians, right? So how, do you t how would you tie that statement into what we, you and I were literally just talking about? Because you got traditional medicine, you got everything that the media is telling us. You have traditional MDs who... And I don't want to criticize MDs. I try not to on the show. But unfortunately, many of them are just got blinders on. They're following what the school told them to do. And they're not doing any of the extra education that you have chosen to do. Or like myself, right? I have zero doctorates. My, my wife does. Uh, but I have chosen a major commitment for years now to keep digging deeper into the health, the wellness, the fitness, like why everything works the way it does. Because it's become a passion of mine thanks to influencers like them saying, hey, become your own inner physician. So what are your thoughts around that? Well, I believe the human body will heal itself if you give it the proper tools. And I've spent a lifetime learning what those tools are and how to use them. With that behind me, I also want to point out that the inner physician comes from your brain and heart. And we know they're connected, but some people have a gut feel of what they should be doing and yet they talk themselves out of it with their brain. Others identify fact after fact after fact after fact, and they never get to the heart of the situation. So what I say, and this is the name of my company, My Doctor Suggests, yep. I like people to learn enough so that they can become their own physician, their own doctor, and that My Doctor Suggests is you recommending for yourself. Can't for other people, but you can for yourself. So I talk to the patients that I have, and I actually refer them, refer to them as they are their own doctor, and it's easy to become your own doctor. From step one, you realize, if I just wanted to stop breathing, what would happen? Well, my body, body like eventually, I would faint, and then my body would kick in and start breathing for me again. Well, that's evidence there's more going on inside of you than just what your will is and you start paying attention to breathing habits to strength to cold to warm to how you walk to your sore muscles and every ache and cramp in your body when you start getting a baseline of who you really are you're already your own doctor from there on out it's just measuring changes i love that and actually since you brought it up i'm going to screen share for our youtube watchers you know there it is you know my doctor suggest.com i'm specifically on your mission page because i love I love getting in about like why people do things like, yes, it's great to have products and services and everything else. But um, like literally actually you're the first, this will be the first podcast I actually mentioned. It's like literally earlier today I was on IRS's website uh, filing all their hurdles and paperwork and everything else to launch my first, my own 501 C three. Uh, let me, let me tell you super fun. Not really. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, the point is, is because over the past few years, I've, dialed a lot more purpose uh, and into everything I do. Like I've literally hard coded my business. So, and eventually I want to grow it. But for now I said, okay, you know what? The first 5% of all gross income gets set aside in a separate account for, you know, not-for-profit initiatives. Uh, and a few of my initiatives that have ended up running, help running events for or whatever, sometimes they didn't have a 501c3 tied to it. And then people get weird about it because they don't want to donate money or they want to be able to write it off. So I was like, you're fine. That's it. I'm just going to launch my own. And then all these events I usually get involved with, if there's not a benefit, great. You can at least run it through mine. You can write it off. And then I will, I will be able to help become a better um, vehicle, so to speak, for this. So that's my purpose, right? Having purpose behind everything we do. And I loved your mission page because clearly you're quite passionate <laughs> about health and wellness. Not just you, you already helped us understand you're tying us back to your family, right? And by the way, I agree. Crohn's disease is wild it is i've had friends with it so it's been interesting and we uh, i'm very big into anti-inflammatory lifestyle choices and with crohn's disease especially that is what it's all about is finding ways to remove inflammatory influences in your life uh so i mean how long have you been basically all all on top of crohn's among other influences like that 
about since I was 21, my brother got Crohn's disease when he was 17. That's a very common issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after about 35 years of studying this, we found that we can use liquid silver combined with probiotics in a regular basis over a long period of time to keep that inflammation down. And he's 60 years old and he's lived a great life and he's got a job still. He's, he's doing terrific, but he has flare ups. And I just, I just saw that and it just, it just hurt me inside that some people just won't do what it takes to get well either. And that one was a hard one for me. Like you just mentioned a 501c3. Mm -hmm. I organized one of those because of African malaria statistics. Wow. I saw statistics at a convention and it said 55% of all children in Africa die before the age of five from a mosquito bite that transfers malaria. I said, you gotta be kidding me. What are we doing about this? Well, the World, World Health Organization has all these nets. Well, my passion was I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna take all of my knowledge and everything I have and I'm just gonna help. And you know, you talk about passion driving the best part of life. I went over there with nothing more than just I wanna help. And by the time I got done, I had finished four clinical trials and did all the toxicology, had 900 patients, and documented a cure for malaria. And wow. you want to talk about joy, passion, driving joy. It wasn't on my checklist of take your anatomy class, take your physiology, get done with this. It was the passion, the drive. I don't even know why I got over there, but I got over there. I was so attached to these little children. I mean, within five minutes of walking into the first clinic, it was out in the middle of nowhere. There were five babies in body bags on the front couch. Oh, and I wow. went, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with this? But you know, by the time I left, we had developed a solution and we had worked with these people. And when you give somebody all of your heart, more things come back to you in your brain than you ever started to think about. And I've been rewarded like you can't believe because of that ever since. See, I love this because like literally I've got hair standing up on my arm. I've got the chills hitting me because I, I, I get it. And I mean, by the way, real quick, just the fact that you just threw this vision in my head of, of babies in body bags on a couch, you know, in the middle of some remote area of Africa, it's, these are powerful experiences, but you, I can tie this back to what you just gave us a hint earlier in the start of the show where you talked about how, you know, a lot of this uh, self-awareness is tied between the head and the heart, but there's a gut component, right? Like that gut feeling and me becoming more of a health nut and doing all the self-study. There's so much tie between, you know, gut bacteria and, and, and a healthy brain and vice versa. So you just kind of gave us a full circle on that. Like, Hey, you went over there for one purpose and discovered all of these other things and you just let it happen naturally is what I'm hearing. It just, you just let it flow. You didn't like have any roadblocks up. You just I said, well, whatever happens happens. And you weren't expecting to create a vaccine or, or were you? <laughs> no, I actually wasn't. But when I got done, I actually left these children in the orphanages with the motivation to learn to read, to learn to do the pharmaceutical sciences that it took to manufacture their own product and it solved their malaria problem. And then they started selling it to the city and now they're actually building stone buildings out of block and brick and they wow. have a place to live. They have their own little hospital. They have homes. They didn't have any of that before. So indirectly we changed their whole economy at the okay, same say, time yeah. the least the least are now in a place where they have the most and i would have never expected that either but again uh i just went with what my gut feeling took me to do and i think that was just one of the greatest gifts i've ever received in my life was to see how it helped them i love the fact you just tied this to motivation and inspiration i mean that's literally how this brand Live the Fuel had begun, um, which is why I love bringing on such a diverse dichotomy of different, you know, different co-hosts because there's always seems to be a little bit of that motivation or that inspiration in the backstory. And I love hearing it come out because 
like live the fuel was originally it stood for live the fired up epic life. Like I do, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I wanted listeners just to get pieces <laughs> of this, but also learn ways to improve that balance of health, business, and lifestyle. So the fact is you're a powerful, healthy influencer. You launch a charity, you go to another country, you're doing all this stuff. But then, oh, another accidental positive side effect is you wanted to leave them with motivation to do their own thing. And another positive spinoff is, oh, we actually positively started helping them influence and change their own economy and create better buildings, better homes. I mean, an income stream. That's crazy. It's wild. Well, you know, I wished I had all the wisdom I have now when I started. <laughs> and if I did, I probably wouldn't have gotten the same outcome. But I just went with that gut feeling and applied all the foundational knowledge that I had. And the people stepped up and realized it too. I also said one time, in my definition of leadership is somebody following somebody else because they want to. I went over there and within days, these people wanted to follow what we had, science, leadership, proven pharmaceutical uh, sciences books. They then wanted to read. They wanted to become like us. And not for ego's sake do I say this, but because all of us are looking for someone to follow. All of us are looking for that leader that's out there. We just have to find it. And it's not always that easy in today's world with all the fake news, with all the improper leaders that we have. But in this case, in this time, uh, it changed my life. I, I'm loving this. Now, I, I got to tie some history back behind this. So um, what was the timeline on that? How, how old were you when you st went over there and started making that impact? Oh, boy. I'd say it was probably 12 or maybe 13 years ago. And okay. Hey, is it okay if I get up and walk across the room? Take yeah. a look here. I, I, I look over my shoulder, yeah. and here I have right here the cover of the medical journal that I published that Yeah. In. Okay. The medical journal, the Indian practitioner, silver completely removes malaria parasites from the blood of human subjects infected with malaria in an average of five days. A review of four randomized multi-centered clinical studies performed in Africa. My wow. name on that article, and I, I didn't mean to do that, and I didn't do it that for ego, but I, frankly, I wanted to make sure I, say, I was saying what I was saying was true. But the uh, answer to this is, is, is very simple. 12 or 13 years ago, I just decided I needed to go over there and help. You know, in America or Canada or Germany or England, it wouldn't be tolerable for 50 or more percent of the babies to die and to just let that continue. Yeah. And mosquito nets aren't doing it. I know the World Health Organization is doing some good things, but, but look what came as a result. Um, I got to go to uh, present this study at the World Health Organization's uh, Meeting of Malaria. They have a Malaria Foundation for the World Health Organization. Wow. And the head of it is Prince Charles and Prince Harry wow. in England. And I got to go present there. And I presented this study. And it was well received. And I wrote a book about it. Oh, here it is down here. A Silver Solution. So I wrote this book, and it's like 300 pages. It has 200 pages of references in the back. Well, when I got home, about two weeks later, I received a package, about a one-foot by one-foot cube, and it had the royal family's name and stamp on it. You know those waxy stamps where they oh, yeah. print it? Well, I had that on there, and oh, my office went crazy. Can you imagine? You got something from the royal family. Anyways, they tear this box open. Inside of it, I had four of my own books. They bought four of my books, Prince Harry, Prince Charles, Nelson Mandela, and their Prime Minister of England, who were in attendance at the Malaria Foundation meeting, heard my presentation, saw what was going on, wanted my book, mailed it to me, and asked me for my autograph. Now, if you want to talk about coming full circle with unintended consequences, that's a reward I just had to share with you. That's awesome. Uh, and actually, I'm going to screen share again because you have all of these books. And we'll have this linked in the blog article too that will come to the episode. But you have them all on, uh, online as well. So, And right there is the silver, the silver Miracle as well. 
So. And if you and if they go through your funnel, I believe we're going to give them away digitally to these people free that want them. So you can, I've given so many books and sold so many books. I'm at the point where if you've got a computer and we can send you one digitally for free, yeah. I think there's a way to do that just because uh, uh, of your uh, funnel, Scott. I appreciate that. Well, I tell people all the time, because uh, I'm actually finishing my first book, so I'm trying to catch up to guys like you, And but I have to finish editing it. That's the most pain in the butt process, by the way, because <laughs> uh, my OCD kicks in and I don't, I have to, uh, it's, 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 it's an adventure. So, uh, so, but the point is, is that the, I don't want to air my book without having the digital content ready to go and having, I, I'm a big supporter of Audible, for example. Are you on Audible as well? I'm not yet, but I think I probably should be. I just haven't slowed down enough to go into the uh, uh, recording studio and re record it myself, and I've been too egotistical to let someone else do it. So maybe I need to bend down a little bit, let someone else read it for me. If I can, <laughs> well, I, you know what? I'll, I'll hit on a couple of things. One, I have a library, but my digital library is bigger than what's behind me. So that gives you a hint. I travel a lot. I love consuming content on audiobooks. Yeah. And my personal vote, you could take it with a grain of salt, is I prefer when the author actually reads their own book because you know the story and there's not a lot of like, I don't know, hired gun type of voice inflection. It's you actually speaking with your passion. And really, and also I've also noticed most people who read their own books for Audible, uh, they will actually usually add in a little bit of extra snippets or a little extra content uh, because they can. And the audio book ends up being a little bit longer than the original book because you're adding a few extra backstories that might not have been included that made print. So that's just something to think about. Uh, but I would highly support you reading your own book if you have time. <laughs> Well, I, I need to make time. And uh, as Scott, I appreciate I think you just schooled me there with some <laughs> real good wisdom. I appreciate it. Well, again, uh, as you uh, let's tie that full circle back to your point on wisdom is that you said, you know, if you were waited a little bit longer and you had more wisdom, you're not sure if that that adventure story you share with us would have been the same impact. And I, I hope, I've had so many great coaches and influencers I've met over the years. And a lot of them tell us, they said, you know what? sometimes you do have to just go for it like you did and you don't want to actually know too much because sometimes if you know too much, it ends up creating these little roadblocks or, uh, well, I know too much on this thing. So maybe I won't try that. I'll go a different way. So it sounds like you were better off doing it 17 years ago and not having <laughs> the same level of wisdom you have now because look at what you created. So, well, I don't do much in my life without at least an outline. And I did have an outline to go over there, but I didn't know what I was going to find. And so uh, in, today's, in today's world, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm an expert to speak on today's world. It's changing every time I turn around. All I know is change is going to happen and that's guaranteed and you better be ready to adapt. That, that's my wisdom now. That's not just wisdom. That is the truth, people. It's, it is uh, every influencer I've ever met when I speak on stage or it's just every positive person I've ever met who's also been through a world of, of heck, they will tell you it, the people who embrace change are the ones who will succeed. It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. It doesn't have to happen next week. It might take it a year but it, or it might take five years. But the whole point is, is continuously embrace change. Don't fight it. And that, that's the secret to success I've learned from multiple people. And it sounds like you're reinforcing it. Well, and as an anti-aging doctor, that may be one of the finest prescriptions I can give because here I am at uh, just about 60 years old and I'm out skiing last weekend. I'm kayaking next weekend. And you know what? Go and do maybe the best anti-aging tool I can think of. Just whatever it is that makes you passionate, go and do. And so uh, uh, Dr. Heal Thyself is a little bit of that medicine too. Well, I love the quick tag on aging and skiing uh, because you and I were joking around before we started the show today that I'm wearing actually one of my shirts that I got from our wedding last month uh, from Kicking Horse up in Canada. And But before that, I told you our, our theme of the wedding was a heli skiing wedding. So my, my wife's parents went heli skiing with us and they are 70s. Wow, so, terrific. 71, 72, getting on a helicopter I mean, they were in the intermediate group. We were in the advanced group. So we went to different spots on the mountain, but they went heli skiing. And I, I was just so impressed by that. That's a commitment to your lifestyle goals right there. Well, that's a lot of good genes you've inherited too. <laughs> so again, that's all I heard. But I was like, I was, I was like, you know what? 
<laughs> my friends were right. I met the right girl because that's just some pretty cool parents. <laughs> well, on the, on the other hand, you could be teased really easily about the fact that you had to take your parents with you on your honeymoon, but I won't go there. Oh, no. Hey, to be fair, they, they actually did not come on the second week. They were just there for the actual wedding part. So that was oh, the, I got gotcha. you. It's okay. Don't worry. No, we didn't have it. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Let's, let's go back even further uh, because you have a lot of unique things about you, even more than what you've already shared with us. Uh, we talked a little about the motivation and the inspiration. And that's why I kept kind of taking a timeline back because you shared with me something that I was surprised about, and I'm wondering if this helped kind of build the foundation for your mental fortitude and what you've accomplished all these years later, but you, you hinted at a little bit of a broken back situation, <laughs> okay? And I, it doesn't sound like it was a small situation because you actually were paralyzed at one point in your life, correct? Yeah, I, I uh, went to the doctor uh, because I had vertigo and I had gotten some food poisoning in Malaysia, and on the flight home, I was... Uh, not able to get a doctor's attention. And when they took me to the emergency room, they rolled me in on a gurney. And then one young man had my shoulders, one young man had my feet. They went one, two, three, and they moved me. Mm -hmm. And the guy holding my shoulders lost his grip. Oh. So I just swung down pendulum style, hit the back of my head, and my back landed on the wheel of the gurney and knocked me out. I woke up and I was paralyzed from the about right about where this camera is, right about there down. Wow. The mi middle of the chest, like right below the sternum? Yep. Wow. So they had me on a breathing tube. They had me on a feeding tube. And they said, we hope the inflammation will go down and you'll get some feeling back. And it was awful to lay there and have the people come in and take a sharp stick and run it up and down my foot every two hours to see if I had any feeling yet. And they were hoping inflammation would go down and they were talking about surgery and they were all these different things happened. And I had three little children and they come in and they look at me through those little rails on the bed. And are, are you OK, Dad? Wow. Going to be OK, Dad. And I didn't have anything I could say at that point in time. Every one of my hopes and dreams went out the window. You're never going to climb that mountain again. You're never going to go down that river again. You're never maybe going to walk again. And all of your hopes and dreams disappear when you're sick or, or afflicted in that way. And I was injured for six days, and they put me on enough treatment and, and tension and muscle relaxants and all the things that I relaxed. My muscles started to come back together in a way that the bones realigned, and my compression fractures relaxed. And all of a sudden, I started to get that tingle back and that tingle back. But I got to tell you, during that six days, my dreams went from everything in the world to my greatest goal was, I just hope someday I can go to the bathroom by myself so someone doesn't have to come in and wipe my butt again. Wow, that and, really, that really uh, simplifies things. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was a difficult situation. And then I did the rehab and the rehab went on and on and on. And part of it was in a pool and part of it was in, in ice skating, believe it or not, they wanted me to strengthen my low back and butt muscles. Yeah, were you already ice skating before this, or you got into this during the rehab? I, I played a little bit of hockey here and there, but I really wasn't, I'd never speed skated for sure. And okay. so I went out and I, I could only make it around the, the rink maybe 10 or 12 minutes the first that's, time. That's like I, me. That's all I got. <laughs> is that that's all you got? <laughs> well, I am not a skater. I can yeah. skate my butt off. I've, I just, I've never been able to make the connection to skating. So. Well, the place they had me skating was right there in Salt Lake City. And I would skate on the inside ring, and I'd go a little farther every time, a little farther every time, a little farther every time, a little stronger every time. And then all these guys had come whizzing by me on the outside ring, hmm. and they'd just go flying past me. Well, you know ego, and you know testosterone and males. We want to keep up. A little, oh my competitive, little competitive spirit, you know. Six guys go ripping past me, and I'm going to try to keep up with them. Well... I'd go 100 feet, they'd pass me, and I'd go 50 feet, and they'd pass me. Well, the bottom line there is that three years and three months later, um, I won the bronze medal in speed skating at the Utah Winter Games after I had rehabbed, 43 years of age. Everybody else was in their young 20s, and I was the only one that had hair. So anyways, that was my kid. <laughs> <laughs> at 43. <laughs> but I'm, yeah. I'm 41 right now, so... Uh, you, well, you don't look 41, and I'm an anti-aging doctor. I get away with saying that. So, uh, Let's tie that back to healthy lifestyle choices, right? <laughs> well, do you, now, now, I honestly believe that aging 
is an attitude. What do you think about that one? That I completely agree with because I have a regular co-host I bring on every month. Uh, shout out to Dr. Megan Cannon. She's a sports psychologist. And we talk a ton about sports and fitness, but a lot about the mindset, the mental game, right? So I completely agree with that. Well, I believe that, and I've trained people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and marathon runners for the Olympics and many, many other people. And I have a situation where I believe until you choose and make your commitment written down, you don't have a program. And so people have to make an attitude change. They have to write down where they're going to go with that change and what it means. And unless you have measurable benchmarks, you're not actually practicing progress towards your achieved goals. So that's how I work with some of the people that I work with. And those benchmarks are to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. Every time you reach that, I can do 25 push-ups, celebrate. It may not last more than a minute or two. And then go to 50 push-ups and then 75 or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Oh, it's just such a, there's so much life built up in that alone. Um, your sports psychologist would be a really good one to talk to about that. Oh, she's, she's amazing. And uh, we love having her on and she's been on for God, I'd say almost two years now. So we, yeah, Megan's great. And because yeah, I, I truly do support everything you just said. The mental game is powerful. I could, I actually, let's tie this together. I got nothing on the broken back, but you'll appreciate this, right? So okay. I, I was not a bronze medalist. Okay. But <laughs> in January, so, so we got married on St. Patrick's day. Uh, and I have an Irish bloodline. So that was kind of accidental. It just worked out that way. Cause the venue we rented, they didn't have it available on Saturday. They had it on Sunday while we were in Banff and Hey, great. So it's easy to remember our wedding day. <laughs> but Touché. I was worried that I might not be able to go to my wedding because in January, I decided to accidentally score my own spontaneous pneumothorax. Ouch. Yeah. Not traumatic, spontaneous. And I had it for three weeks and I had no idea I was still working out with it. And for the listeners that are newer, uh, that's back. I'll tell you all about it back on episode 250. But long story short, apparently if you're a tall, lean endurance athlete and you get sent into fits of convulsive coughing, more common in your late 20s and 30s, not in your 40s, uh, you can <laughs> spring a leak, so to speak. I, I, I triggered a blister on my lung. The blister popped, released air into my chest wall, and I self-collapsed my left lung. Uh, actually, the exact words that the x-ray guy was a significant spontaneous pneumothorax, which led to them uh, calling an uh, ambulance and rushing me to another hospital, to the ER, to jam a chest tube into me. Because apparently I had a life-threatening injury. I don't know how true you would agree with that, but I didn't think it was. Oh, oh new, pneumothorax is just a, a short way of saying only one lung can breathe for you now if you only rupture one. But if you rupture both of them, you've got about 10 minutes before you're just not going to get enough oxygen. So yeah, it, it can be fatal. Yeah. And uh, sounds like maybe with your fitness level, it played a significant role in, uh, in surviving it, even though it didn't seem like anything more than a cough or a severe cough. <laughs> I thought I was getting a chest cold. I had a shortness of breath. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, so I'm a, I'm a huge CrossFitter too, right? I'm a CFL1 trainer. And so not, not kidding you, I competed in a CrossFit competition with the collapsed lung because I didn't know I had it. Wow. During three weeks of collapse, I had no idea. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't catch my breath. Like I was jumping rope and I made a joke that I was like, oh man, I think I have like a chunk of mucus that broke loose and was shaking in my chest because it feels like something is shaking in there. I told the surgeon that later and she said, no, that was your lung because you had air above and below it and it was you know, not fully inflated. So it was actually moving in your chest wall. And I was like, oh, okay. That's, yeah, that would explain a lot. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't get pneumonia from that. That's the secondary infection that you get from that. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it you can recover from it very quickly yeah. if they do the right things very quickly. <laughs> well, so to, to tie together into this all uh, anti-inflammatory lifestyle and mindset, right, mm -hmm. is I, I, I'll do it all, man. I, I left the corporate world years ago, and the reason why there's fire in my logo is because I moved to Arizona, left the cubicle life, and I served as a hotshot wildland firefighter with the federal government. You live out west, so you know what I did. And that was one of the most extreme things I've ever done in my life. And I did that at 31, 32. So I already have a great mental game, which is why I did not realize, I, you know, and to you say, you know, healthy fit, I figured the other lung was doing great. So 
once I got to the hospital though, and they were basically saying, listen, if this doesn't heal while on a chest tube and on a vacuum system, we may have to do surgery. And I ended up actually agreeing to the surgery because I was also worried about our wedding timeline. I have to be able to safely get in a pressurized plane, fly to Canada. We have, you know, helicopter booked. We're doing all this stuff. And I told the surgeon, I was like, okay, I got six weeks. What do we got? And she said, if you agree, we do it, we'll fix it. And you'll be healed in time. She's like, your rib muscles might be a little bit pissed. <laughs> um, so she's like, you might not have the endurance you normally do due to some, you know, some rib muscle pain, but she's like, the lung will be fine. So I said, all right, let's do it. So to your point, I wasn't really worried about not being able to go to the bathroom, you know, cause I wasn't yeah. doing analysis, but all these other things, I mean, wow, not being able to go to my own wedding, and also, I love athletics. I'm actually now training right now for my first 100-mile mountain bike race because wow. as soon as I recovered from the surgery, I said, all right, I need a new goal, back to the mental game. And I've done lots of 100-mile you know, charity cycling events on a road bike. And when I lived in Colorado, I used to do 65-mile-long uh, 65 uh, mountain bike racing. I never did 100. So that's just how weird my brain is. I said, all right, well, come this July – I'm going to go do this, you know, 19 year old every year for 19 years. They've been doing this race called the wilderness one one here in Pennsylvania. And, uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, good luck to it. I do. I, I, uh, I've had some experience with training some marathon runners from, uh, Australia marathon team and, and uh, they went to the Olympics and John Campbell was one of my guys. He won the Boston marathon. Oh yeah. I'm familiar. I, do you remember John? I, I, I ran a marathon back in 08. I, I did not enjoy it, but. <laughs> oh my gosh, that Boston marathon, my gosh. Anyway, I, I've got some stories about that. But what I do is I try to focus on an anti-inflammation story for all athletes because that's the biggest curse for an athlete. So I've developed a couple of things and one is liquid silver and it's not the old silver of the past. This is new and I'm using all magnetic resonance imaging technology to make a structured silver that's alkaline. You see, all the other silvers have been acidic, which yeah. is a cause for inflammation. So I've developed silver in a way now that for the first time, it's alkaline and it's structured. And look at what I give to my runners and my bikers <laughs> right here. This is a silver sugar-free lozenge. Let's just I'll open it for now you. How did you create a lozenge without sugar? Well, I used monk fruit as a sweetener. And okay. then so I was, actually- Form of sugar, just not the same way. Well, you know, sweeteners, you and I could talk for an hour on sweeteners, <laughs> and there's not one sweetener that we couldn't totally character assassinate. Sugar okay. and aspartame, and you name it, it's going to be a horrible, awful, terrible thing eventually. The bottom line is your body uses sugar, just we don't want to give it too much. Yeah. So I give these lozenges, and we suck on them, and it leaves a residue of silver in your throat. Right okay. off the bat, that's going to work for sinus problems. That's going to work for throat problems. That's going to work for inhale, exhale, and voice box issues for athletes that do extreme sports a long time. How long is that going to take, by the way? What's that? The island miles. <laughs> I've done, like I said, I've done centuries on a road bike, but you're going a lot faster, and that's still most of the day. I think this might be, I'm, this might be like a, almost a 24-hour race. I don't really know. I'm just, I'm just training. Wow. That's I got the road bike, you know, set up here on the trainer in my office right behind me. So well, that's, that's fantastic. And what a goal and get right on top of it again. But I use point. silver, I use the lozenges and I use silver gel to keep the inflammation in athletes down. In fact, I was just talking to NFL and the NFL guys have uh, approved these products for the NFL because they get so many staph infections in the locker room. They get so many strep infections. Basketball and football players are swapping way too much of their same breathing uh, uh, fluids, if you will. And so we're uh, becoming very, very positive and an influence that's helping these athletes with, with the gel, with the with the inhaling ability that these athletes have. Boy, you don't get within five feet of them, they'll suck every drop of air in it, and that includes what you sneezed, that's what you, what you coughed, and you're the same. I mean, you've got such powerful ribs, you, you sucked your rib cage off your lung. I mean, that's a pretty powerful move. I guess. So, <laughs> so we, help, we, we, help all these, we help all these athletes right now with, with these different things and uh i'm intrigued by the silver though because like i obviously clearly silver is not considered a heavy metal or else you, you wouldn't be able to use it in obviously these types of applications right you're um, correct yeah like mercundex, 
When Doesn't I was list, gold or silver is uh, heavy metals. All the rest are. Okay. So I, when I was in the hospital, like I do not familiar with this. So my anti-inflammatory benefits were more nutritionally focused. I was crushing water, uh, using a, a, a salt accordingly in, in, cause there's so much hydration going on. I was not eating the hospital food unless they, except for the eggs and bacon. I had my now wife, uh, fiance at the time I had her bringing in, I have my own grass fed cattle. I mean, I, I have my own stock of bones. I make my own bone broth. I'm like, babe, I need you to be bringing in bone broth daily. I need that anti-inflammatory benefits. I want the healthy collagen. Uh, back to your point earlier about uh, you're actually connected with Arnold Schwarzenegger and about proteins, right? So it's like, okay, I, I need to make sure that I have quality proteins, not for the protein per, per se, but I wanted the amino acid profile, right? So the proteins I consume are undenatured, not denatured. A lot of people don't know what that means, but clearly you do. <laughs> yeah. you, you got a little bit of experience with that because you, you were hinting that, didn't you basically help bring about one of the first protein powders to the market? Yeah, the very first one. And the very first double-blind placebo-controlled study in muscle and fitness, I published. My name's on it. You can probably go look it up 30 years ago. And the idea there is very simply this. People said protein was going to help you get stronger, and it would make you uh, all these benefits, but no one could prove it. Mm. So I actually did the double-blind placebo-controlled study, and I published it with Cal Berkeley in muscle and fitness. And what happened was we discovered that protein powders make you 30% stronger and give you 30% bigger bulk for a number of reasons. And the reasons are amino acids. So if you want a shortcut, you're in the hospital, skip the protein, go right to branch chain amino acids. And yep. then, you're, then you're well on your way to having the building blocks. What that means basically is this. Proteins are very large, sticky molecules. And when they touch each other, they stick together. And the surface area goes down. Mm -hmm. And you can't get it across the blood, uh, your intestines, to your blood flow very easily. But the building blocks that make up protein are called amino acids. And the body readily brings in amino acids and makes neurotransmitters and immune cells as well as muscles. So if you just take the amino acids, already broken down for you, you're going to get them into your muscle, into your bloodstream and muscles much quicker. Yes. Okay. So I love that. I knew you were simplified for people because a lot of people, they, the marketing, and again, I'm a marketing professional, so I get it. All the sales and marketing, all the online stuff, it's protein, this protein down. I'm like guys, like that's actually not what your muscles and your tissues need. They need the quality branch chain aminos, which is a conversion process, right? That's happening in the body once you've consumed them. Well, there's one other thing and that is, uh, about two years ago, they changed the regulation on protein and what a protein is. Mm -hmm. And it used to be these sticky gummy, put them in a shake, and you can hardly blend them into a, a shake. They were so sticky and clumpy. Well, they allowed milk proteins to be classified as the same proteins as the healthier proteins that we'd been using for 25 years. And now most of your shakes stir easy, taste really great, because maltodextrin is allowed to be a milk protein now. Well, that's what a malt ball is, a yeah. pure sugar malt ball with a little bit of protein around it. And now most of your protein shakes are using that maltodextrin, calling it a protein. And people are going, how come my protein isn't working like it used to? Wrong protein choice, people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I tell people all the time, like I never even knew it's funny because a friend of mine had a, a, a wine reiner dog and great dog, but he has to feed her a dog food that is undenatured uh, with the proteins in it. And I was like, why? And he's like, oh, because her stomach expands. It's, in, it's inflammatory if she tried to consume denatured proteins that are in the dog food. Well, then all of a sudden I start digging into that. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Most cheap, you know, mass produced, you know, assembly line proteins are all cooked too quickly, too high of a temperature, you, you, you lose all the natural probiotics that might have come from, let's say, you know, a good, clean, grass-fed dairy source, for example. Uh, and they're now, to your point, they've gotten too complicated for your body to break down and consume properly. So I, I, that's how I learned what, what denatured versus undenatured was. I didn't even know there's a difference. And there's not a lot of companies that make an undenatured protein, I found out. Well, most people don't know what denatured or natured or anything of that sort is. I summarize it this way, because you did a great job there. I summarize it this way. If it's been boiled for more than one minute, 
Mm -hmm. It's been denatured. What does that mean? A chemical reaction has taken place while you're boiling it, and the protein has now broken down and lost all of its antioxidants. Okay. If you boil it, antioxidants are gone. Protein needs to be carried into your muscles, into your immune system, into your bloodstream. And the cofactors like vitamin C and other antioxidants are just taxi cabs that carry those amino acids in and they need, you need both of them. But if you boil it and you take away the taxi, all you've got is a bunch of uh, proteins floating around without any uh, uh, source of active transport. And then you add in, as you just taught us, all this excess maltodextrin and yeah. also the fact that there's also been proof that if you overconsume these lower quality proteins, your body can't process all of it. It's very taxing on your liver and other organs. So your body often then ends up actually trying to protect you and then starts storing the proteins as fat, which is like, wait a minute, I thought, I thought protein was supposed to build muscle. I'm like, yeah, but if you start chugging 30 gram protein shakes two to three times a day and it's all low quality junk, to your point that you know nothing's being carried you're just going to be either pee it out or you're going to store it as really bad because your fat cells are designed to protect you am i right about that well, absolutely yeah. and you'll know you're in this situation if you're constipated mm, there it is get to that level of constipation you're at that place where you're not absorbing what you should and you're packing and impacting what you should you're becoming dehydrated at the same time and by the way if you're allergic to the protein that you're consuming, you'll know it because you'll get gas and diarrhea. There you go. And actually, the funny thing is, a lot of people who are, they're reading these, sorry, uh, men's health, women's health, all these fluffy magazines that are just being paid by ads to put this stuff together. People aren't being taught that. They're not helping them realize that they're, these lower quality products you're putting in your body, are you listening to your body? Are you realizing that you have a gaseous response or you have you know, you're, you're the stinky person in the gym. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's your body trying to communicate with you and letting you know that stuff's not right. Like you're putting the wrong stuff in. But people well, I, I went to a veterinary conference and one vet said to me, you know what? We take a look at what we put in the front end of a cow and we can see what's coming out the back end and know what's going on and adjust the foods accordingly. Why don't we do that with humans? And that's why you need to be your own doctor. My doctor suggests means you know what goes in the front end and what comes out the back. And you can tell by the smell what's going on inside your muscles. I love that. that. That's a t-shirt for you, I'm guessing. It is, because I'm a big sticker and t-shirt guy. By the way, my wife is, a, uh, is an equine vet, so we've had these discussions too. So I grew up on a farm when I was a kid. So, uh, but she went to Cornell and UPenn, and she's a, do she's a doctor of equine, large animal veterinary, and also a doctor of chiropractic. So she's gone the medical and the more wellness route balance as well, like you. Obviously, not human, animals. <laughs> Well, I just, I just love learning because it does so much for my vision into the future. Uh, I think if I define the word mature, which I hated that word when I was a teenager, you know, why don't you be more mature? Now I define the word mature by the person who sees a clear vision farthest into the future. You see, when we're 12, we see an hour ahead of time till dinner. When we're 16, we see till we can drive the car and maybe till tomorrow. When we're 21, we start having bigger plans. But the most mature person who can be their own doctor is the person who can see the farthest into the future, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, and plan accordingly. Wow, I love that. Well, listen, we're coming to the top of the hour. Do you have a couple more minutes to close out? I'm delighted, yes. Okay. So because I, I don't want to lose a, a little bit more clarification on the silver thing because that's still new to me and I'm, I'm, I'm geeking out and I got, now I got to go dig into your site deeper and do some more stuff, <laughs> uh, which I'm not worried about that because you do have, besides product knowledge, because you do have a shopping cart and everything else in your site, you guys have more stuff in the back end of your site on, on helping people understand the purpose of silver, correct? Yeah, there's about 200 videos and they talk about silver, where it comes from, why it works, what its history is, the fact that the pioneers used it, the fact that it was what people used to cure the plague. You remember the plague, a hundred year long bacterial disease? And we said, she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. 
that oh. came from people who realized if they ate with pure silver silverware, yep. actually didn't get the bacterial infection called the plague. So those who could afford it, use silver and they survived the plague. Now we have high tech silver for your body, for your wounds, for inside your body, outside your body and a lot of delivery systems, uh, even lozenges. Uh, it will change your life because it's God's antibiotic without side effects. I'm loving that. God's antibiotic without side effects. So uh, this fancy new silver tech, is this because you guys, I mean, we have so much advanced laboratory uh, capabilities nowadays. Uh, I've had a guy on the show. He's a, he's a geneticist. He's doing research with the Mayo Clinic right now. And it's just cool geeking out with him too, because there's so much advancement. So this newer silver, is this, this is something that you guys have to actually develop and fine tune in a lab? Or yeah, we, we, we actually take the silver and number one, we make it 99.99% pure. Oh, there we go. I, I just found that on your page. <laughs> I, I, well, your, your intuition is excellent. Then we take structured water. See, everybody else has been using tap water or whatever water they call is clean. But we actually start with steam so that there's no impurities. There's nothing that can bind silver and oxygen together and make rust, if you will. So we structure the water. We have pure silver. We pump 10,500 volts through a, an a electromagnet that's pulsing every 10,000th of a second. So we're making this pulse deliver electromagnetic current through the silver one molecule at a time the silver comes off and bonds with the oxygen in the water now the water is flowing and the oxygen and silver are the two most reactive molecules as soon as they touch a germ they're going to destroy it wow now that's fun <laughs> was how, long, how long did it take I, you guys I, to I figure start all that out? Saying bigger words if you want. <laughs> no, no, I'm loving it. I mean, how long did it take you guys to figure all this out? Well, I spent a lot of time in Africa, and they weren't all getting well because of the acidic nature of some of the drugs and some of the products they were given. I said, we have to give them alkaline silver. And when, uh, when I spent about 18 months discovering how to do that, it became very evident that we had something really, really significant. In the laboratory, we could see it in the, in the microscope where it destroyed pathogens faster, more completely and totally for that matter. So I knew we had something that was not even requiring a prescription. And when we gave it to humans with their antibiotics, it makes their antibiotics a thousand fold stronger. See, that's something that I love where you just kind of tossed in there in the last few words, which is, this is over the counter. I think that's, and in some countries it doesn't matter, right? But here in the US, like something that impactful for a healthy lifestyle and you guys were able to keep it an over the counter product that's not a prescription requirement. That's, that seems to be pretty important as well. Well, what happened is that in 1924, the patent for silver in a liquid or medicinal form expired. Oh. They had a patent on it, it expired. Now nobody can patent it anymore. And then they discovered penicillin and everyone said, who cares about silver? Penicillin is the future until they discovered all these side effects and all these resistant problems that you're having. And silver's making a huge comeback. So we had to develop a newer, greater alkaline structured technology so that it's safer, that it's better, that it works more completely. And because of that, doesn't require a prescription because that time expired in 1924. Wow. See, I always love that. We've been tying history and like crazy on the show. So it's like, <laughs> there's so much science. There's so much modern tech that you've reviewed today, but also you still have to love the connection to history. I, I'm, I'm loving it. So it's very full circle. So my doctorsuggest.com, we've hinted at it multiple times on the show, ladies and gentlemen, we've got, this will all be linked in the show notes. Uh, he does have literally a ton of YouTube videos. Uh, I'm not kidding you. And we'll have to make sure that channel is linked in the show notes as well so you guys can subscribe to it and, and, and start learning because that's some, one of the biggest things I promote on this show is the self-education factor. Stop blaming everybody else and you don't have to know everything tomorrow. Just start watching a video or reading a book and take that responsibility we hinted at earlier in the show. Uh, actually, one of the quotes that was shared with me uh, when you signed up today, uh, Gordon, was uh, you can be your own doctor is a common quote directly tied back to your site, mydoctorsuggest.com. So with your wisdom, 
uh, I like to have my guest co-hosts help close out the show. So is there an, an, uh, an all-encompassing message you want to leave behind for listeners? Uh, well, yes. And I've written a book. It's called The Essence of Wellness. It's in all of my books. And it's a way for you to self-diagnose yourself. Take the word essence, and it means the most important part of something. Essence of wellness. The most important part of wellness is each one of the letters in the word essence, E-S-S-E-N-C-E. -S -S -E -E. And they all stand for one principle of wellness. Altogether, it makes complete wellness. So eat correctly, sleep correctly, supplement, exercise, uh, neutralize poisons and toxins, drink clean water and breathe clean air, and neutralize stress. E-N-E-E-N-E-S-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E -E. I'll do that again. E-S-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Eat, sleep, supplement, exercise, neutralize poisons, clean air and water, eliminate stress. Now, I've made a questionnaire. You mm. take a full page of questions and you calculate by your answers where you stand on eating correctly. Then you do another page on sleeping correctly, another page on all of the different components here. When you're done, you have discovered where you need to start first or where your strengths are or where your weaknesses are, knowing that the essence of wellness is determined by you and you've become your own doctor. So where do we, where do we find this questionnaire? That's going to be in the books. Oh, okay. um, the, the, the miracle book, the silver miracle yep. has it within that book. Um, I've even got it to where I've given out just the questionnaire all by itself, just so you can print it out and just use that. Let me see if I can find that for you and get that for you as well. But in the silver miracle, it's in that book as well. And it's mentioned in all of my books at the very top. If you look at the header, Essence of Wellness is on the very top of every cover of every book in some form because that's my link to the overall wellness and you becoming your own doctor. So you've got Essence of Wellness at the very top. Oh, yeah, and that red bar. Yeah. And yeah. then you, if you take the questionnaire, my gosh, you'll learn a ton about yourself. And then if you read the suggestions in those areas, Oh my gosh, sleep is one of the most valuable tools I've ever seen in today's world for the kids that are 25 and younger because they're just not sleeping and their hormones are getting out of balance and they don't know why and they don't know what's going on. That one component alone we did a test on and people in this study, actually all of them were 21 to 22 years of age, deprived of four hours of sleep a night. So yeah. you're only able to sleep four hours per night. In two weeks, every single one of them tested positive for diabetes. Now, that's how powerful sleep is, and that's how fast hormones can get back in order if you implement sleep with eating correctly, with exercise. All of these, every one that you use starts to become valuable, but when you put them all together, it's the essence of wellness. I've, I've coached that for a long time. I tell people all the time, like I, I'm owner of Blue block, blue block glasses for the evening when I'm on from the computer. I, I unplug my Wi-Fi at night because I care about the quality of my sleep. I want to remove excess frequencies. There's all kinds of signs because I've had them on the show. <laughs> um, but it, the power of sleep, I'm, I tell people from a fitness standpoint, rest and recovery. So many times I see athletes getting injured because they're not giving themselves enough rest days or rest and recovery. And, and what is, to your point, what is the quality of your sleep? I mean, yes, you, you might be getting eight hours of sleep, maybe, but what also, what are those eight hours like? Do you have your room blacked out? Do you have a, a, you know, light blocking drapes? Do you have the Wi-Fi still going all night long? Are you using like maybe a negative noise thing? Everybody's, there's all these little hacks nowadays. I've used them all. <laughs> because I care about one, my one, one more punch on sleep just because of the, I know a lot of people watching are elite athletes. And if you're doing something that's athletic, let's say you're a quarterback or you're a bike rider and you're doing something that requires muscle memory and by doing it over and over and over, you're wiring your brain to get to the point where you'll always remember doing that very same thing in a very specific way. You realize that the only time your brain wires itself permanently, a permanent memory can be made is during REM sleep. So you may have learned something during the day, but it's at night during your REM sleep that your brain actually 
trickles across and makes a new connection. Now tomorrow, you've got that muscle memory without the sleep. You're right back to where you started without muscle memory, and you know how important that is to athletes. Yeah, we've had a few uh, neurological episodes in the history of this show, and we talked a lot about healthy synaptic pathway establishment. So that's everything you're hitting on right now. So, man, Gordon, you're, you're on point. You, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, listen, I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't gotten a few hints off of today's episodes, we barely – seen the tip of the iceberg uh, from Gordon today. You got to go visit mydoctorsjust.com. Dig into his history, his background. I think we kind of unveiled a few amazing parts of his history, but I'm telling you, there's so much more here. Uh, we can't cover it all in one episode. Sorry, uh, but we can only do so much. But he definitely dropped some seriously healthy lifestyle balancing bombs on you guys today. I loved it. And again, all this will be linked in the show notes like we always do. So again, thanks for tuning in to another powerful Live the Fuel podcast show today. Again, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. Remember, you too can live the fuel.